This talk is, uh, like most of my talks, are always about how software, how hardware works together to bring performance to your, to your, uh, to your computer. And this talk, is, uh, <coughs> this talk is also about that. So um, we start off by just giving, representing what a modern CPU does. <laughs> OK, more people. <laughs> what a modern CPU does or, or what the modern CPU can do. Uh, what modern CPU you can do, it can execute uh, more than one instruction in a single cycle. So this is most, most, most of the, most of the, what most of the CPUs now they can do. Uh, what, what also it can do, it, they can also execute instruction out of order. That means that if uh, the CPU is executing some instructions and the, for a single instruction, the input parameters are still not available. The CPU can the CPU can skip the CPU can skip the instructions and move to execute other instructions that follow them in the instruction stream. Um, but there is a catch: the CPU cannot execute any random instruction. Uh, any random instruction. There is a limit to what instructions the CPU can execute, and we we call this instruction level parallelism. How much code can profit from the available hardware resources? Okay. So what is the main limiting factor on what modern CPUs can actually do? And the main limiting uh, factor are instruction dependencies. Now on the right you see some kind of, some kind of code. This is a code that uh, computes cosine. And if you look at it, it has uh, some statements. One uh, statement coming after statement, after statement, after statement. And with the arrows, if you look at the arrows, you see, for example, that there is uh, arrows represent dependencies. You don't have to analyze this code in, in depth. This is just some code that executes, that, that calculates uh, cosine. But if you look at it, there are dependencies, and dependencies go back. So, for example, if you look at, uh, if you look at, if you look at uh, this statement here, it, it's dependent on the previous one. And if you look at the statement after that, it's dependent on the previous one. So what you see here is actually a dependency chain, because most of the, of, of the statements or instructions depend on the previous statement and depend on the previous st statement. That means when you're executing your code, this function where the CPU executes, it cannot skip over some instructions. It has to execute them sequentially. Okay, so, so the, this, for the CPU, this means that the instructions, sorry, I need to move this. For the CPU, this means that the instructions in this particular case must execute sequentially. You cannot move to execute one a next instruction because you don't have uh, the, the the input uh, the input paramet parameters for the current instruction. So, what does that mean? Imagine you have a chip which has which has unlimited resources. It has unlimited number of registers, unlimited number of uh, operations. Uh, uh, of ALO operations, it, it can execute, let's say, million F uh, floating point operation in a single cycle. But this function, cosine, it cannot execute it immediately. It has to go first after second, after third, after fourth, because of these instruction dependencies that keep on appearing. OK, now let's do a little quiz. And this will re require that you think about it a bit. So we have a machine with endless resources. It has, it can load as many as many uh, memory locations as you like. It has unlimited loads, unlimited stores, unlimited, 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 um, unlimited uh, alloy operations, floating point operations, whatever. So it can also skip over the instructions if it doesn't have, a, if it doesn't have, if the current instruction doesn't have both of it, its parameters, it can just skip over it and execute the next instruction. Uh, instruction and, and next one and the next one until it finds one that has actually uh, until finds instruction that has all of its input parameters ready. Uh, each operation takes one cycle except for loads and stores that take three cycles. So the question is how many cycles does the machine need to execute the following following loops? So here's the loop one. It's equivalent of STD transform. So it's uh, C of phi equals A of phi plus B of phi. Now, if you look, look on the right side, there is assembly. It's a pseudo assembly. You load one uh, A plus psi to register A V. 
you load by B plus 1 to the register BV, you add them together and you store the result to C plus I. Now, again, machine is, has endless amounts of, of uh, endless amounts of uh, uh, of uh, resources. So, any idea how much time would this take to, to, to calculate? S one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven cycles. Okay, so what happens is that the CPU can execute first two loads together, so, and it, it's total three cycles. Then it can add, it takes four cycles, and to store it, it's another three cycles, so it's total seven cycles. So regardless of n, n can be one, n can be 1,000, it can be one million, it's always seven cycles, which is like really nice, right? Yes? Yes, it can start the next iterations. It's, it can re read in advance, read in advance, read in, it can read all iterations and, and, and in advance. So this, this, this kind of code, you, there is an instruction dependency chain, but it's really short. It's just within a single iteration. So C of V equals I of Y, C of V depends on B and it depends on A and store depends on C. And so uh, C of V depends on B and A and store depends on C, but other than that, there are no, there are no other dependencies. Okay, here's the second loop. So this is the second loop. It's a summing loop. It goes, uh, runs through an, uh, an array and sums it sum plus equals A of I. Now, on the right side, you see the assembly. And intentionally, I unrolled this loop two times. So what happens here is that you have uh, this uh, load to register. Then you're summing. Then you load another value to register. Then you're summing. Now, question is, how much time would it take to, to, to do this? Four cycles. Yeah. Okay. N not, no, no. Uh, you, I know what you mean, you mean trick of uh, summing, but it doesn't work in hardware like that. You cannot do this uh, tree summing. Yes, so there is a dependency chain because for this sum, you need the previous sum. And from this sum, you need the previous one. So there is dependency chains on sums. But how, uh, let's say, put the sums aside, loading, just loading data. How much time does it take to load all the data we need? Three cycles, yes. And summing takes one cycle, but it has to be done sequentially, OK? So, so you, you do it one by one by one. So you have total n, uh, n iterations and n, n additions, which are sequential. So it will be n times one plus Three, so it is n plus three cycles. So in this case, we have a we have a dependency, and this um, uh, we have a dependency that crosses over loop boundaries. It's a loop carry dependency. We have a dependency, in, and for that for that reason uh, for that reason it is it is slower. Okay, let's see the next example. Okay, uh, summing elements of a linked list equivalent of STB reduced on a linked list. So we have a linked list here. We have a linked list here. Uh, so while current is not null pointer, sum plus equal current plus value, current equals current arrow next. And this is the uh, this is the assembly assembly. So what happens here is while current is not null pointer, register current while loads current plus offset of val, then we sum it to v, then we have current load current plus offset next, we load the next current, so this is corresponds to this line, and if it's zero, we break, and then again, we repeat the same, so this is a row two times. Now, how about this? How much time would this need to take? Can we do all loads in parallel now with this example? Sorry? No, no, no. We cannot do, actually, there is this dependency between this current load uh, and depends on this one, and again, it, it, it crosses uh, it crosses the, the loop boundaries. And you have a dependency chains on the loads. In the previous one, you had dependency chains on the summing, and here you have a dependency chain on the load. And if you remember, the loads are um, take three times uh, three times more uh, more um, uh, uh, take three cycles. Okay, so when you have a load that takes three cycles, this will take at least the length of the, if the length of the list is n, it will take three times n. 
Okay, plus some additional time for this summing, which is also another another uh, dependency chain. So there are actually two dependency chains. One is on load and one is on summing. So the, the, the runtime is about three times then or maybe a bit more. So if then is the linked list. So what happens? You have the most powerful hardware, but it's not fast as you would expect. And the reasons are these instruction level dependencies. Um, so CPU can skip modern CPUs, out of order CPUs that you have in your mobile phone, in your desktop, in your server, they can skip instructions that they cannot execute because they miss the parameters, but it won't help them. If you have a dependency change that goes from the beginning to the end of the loop, it won't help them, so it, it won't work. Um, so when I say instruction level parallelism, what I mean is how much parallelism, how much things you can execute simultaneously that is available in the code itself. So it's not the property of the machine, it's the property of the code. And if you have bad code, no, no machine can do anything about it. So for this reason, maybe compilers are more important to solve these issues more than, than CPUs. Uh, so if you have a loop which has really short dependency chains, we say these loops have high instruction level parallelism. So the first example, the STD transform has a high instruction level parallelism. These loops are really easy to parallelize also, not only in the context of instruction level parallelism, but also for vectorization or for multi-threading or for GPU offloading. These are really easy loop to parallelize and speed up. They can execute essentially in, in, in constant time. The second one, uh, you, have a, you have a loop carried the dependency inside the loop, but you don't have it on, on data loads. You have a loop carried dependency on, on uh, addition. This you have medium ILP, because addition is actually quite fast in modern CPUs. So, and finally, you have the loop three, which is the while loop that goes over a linked list, which has a low ILP. It has two dependency chains, and the, there is a dependency chain on data loads. And data loads in modern CPUs, I said here it was three cycles, but that's not true. On your computer, it can be anything between three cycles and 200 cycles, depending on where the data is coming from, if it, if it is coming from registers or from data caches. Uh, okay, okay. Just another thing. Um, there, for each instructions in your CPU, there are two numbers that determine its performance. One is called instruction throughput, and the other one is called instruction latency. Uh, what's, what's the difference? So here on the table, in this table, you can see it on, this is on, um, it's Intel uh, uh, Alder Lake. It's a new generation of Intel CPUs. And you see that the loading has a latency of seven, adding one and multiplying five. Latency means how much time takes from the, from the time, how many cycles does it take for the instruction from the time it enters the CPU, starts executing until it finishes. And you see it's seven, one, and five. Throughput, so the CPU can execute more instructions. It can execute hundreds of instructions in parallel. So in the CPU, uh, in any CPU, modern, big, large CPU, like Intel's desktop, or maybe ARM, uh, ARM larger Cortex A72, it can execute 15 or 100 instructions in parallel. Throughput means, you can start the next instruction. Uh, when is the time you can start the next instruction? Um, let's say I started load. When I can start the next load? And throughput 0 0.33 means I can start three loads in a single cycle. Multiplying, I can have two multiply uh, of loads in a single cycle. Sometimes the throughput is bigger than one. Let's say for division throughput maybe five. That means I can start a division every fifth cycle. I don't have to wait for the, 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 the other division to end. This is the rate at which I can start the same instruction. And this is important. Why is it important? Well, if you have a high instruction level parallelism, you're mostly running on throughput. This is, these are the numbers that are limiting you. And you have a code with low instruction level parallelism. What is limiting you is the latency. And latency is almost always uh, longer than the throughput. So CPU, and you can increase CPU, uh, throughput, it's much easier to increase, but latency remains the same. Uh, questions? Yes? The cy in cycles, 
Uh, is it in cycles? Yes, it's in cycles. It's cycles. Yeah, this is from the uh, Intel's intrinsic guide. Uh, so these are these are vector instructions, vector loads, vector adds, and vector multiplies on AVEX. More questions. No, no, cycles, also in cycles. Instructions per cycle. Cycle per instruction, I think it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Yes? Can you measure the throughput less than one? Like, uh, if you have the instruction, you, you perform some instruction, and it takes one cycle because the latency is actually seven, uh -huh. so on each cycle you perform only one load of the integer. So how it comes that you can say that the throughput is less than one. Like so, how you measure that measure? so this is not this is from the instruction manual intels. It's not what I measured. So uh, I think what this means is that you can start three loads uh, in one cycle. You cannot go, you can not start instructions less than one cycle. But the way it's written like this, it means you can have three loads in one cycle. So you can actually you can uh, issue twenty one loads before the first one issued it, it's finished. So you can have twenty one pending loads. And the first one will still not be finished. Questions? Okay. Yes, yes. So this is load, but I think so. The the the, the manual in Intel's manual wasn't clear. I think the seven cycle latency is just the latency for um, for the for the L1 cache. It's if it comes from L2 cache or from memory, it's a different story. Okay, so we know what ILP is and we know how it works. Now the question is how to increase it because increasing it actually has a really nice effect on performance. So I already sent the, the codes that typically have medium or low ILP. So the first one are reductions. So this is when you sum to a variable, you have an accumulator, you're summing to it, you're multiplying to it, you're, you're doing and add, all, so you have a large set of values that end up in one value. So this, is, this has low LP. Then you have pointer chasing codes. Pointer chasing means you're, re, you're going through a list of, list of pointers. And this typically has with, it happens with linked lists, with trees, because trees, it, it, trees if you look at it, it, just one part of the tree it looks like a linked list. To some extent, it happens with hash map with separate chaining. So separate chaining means that you have a, in case of a collision, you have a linked list that holds all the collided values. Uh, if you have a auto-generated code, sometimes that happens also. If you have a like, huge auto-generated code that has 30,000 lines in, a, in a C++, I've seen that too in practice. So this also has, can have long dependency chains. And also if you have a loop which has a quite large loop body, in that case, the instruction dependency chain, although it doesn't, uh, it breaks on it, it's not, it doesn't have loop carried dependencies. Nevertheless, this kind of code has, uh, this kind of code has, um, can have problems with, uh, with, with dependency chains and low LP. So all the te 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 techniques I'll, I'm going to present can help. Uh, okay, so essentially there are four techniques. The first one is interleaving. So you have a dependency chain, then you take another dependency chain and then you interleave them. So you interleave them, you make a um, braid. Uh, and that actually helps, increases the level of ILP and makes your code faster. The second one is you can shorten the dependency chain. So if you have a dependency chain with n, if you shorten it to be with n half, then you can see performance improvement. The, the third thing is that if you have a dependency chain that you go over and over the same, for example, with linked lists or binary trees, you can, uh, you can um, instead of iterating n times, if you decrease the number of times you iterate through the dependency chains, that can lead to performance improvements. And finally, the breaking dependency chains. So you remove the breaking uh, the dependency chains completely. Now, what I guess now that you have an idea about one, because you know how it works, maybe two, but three and four are not that easy. So we'll go through the techniques and, 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 and explain them and give some numbers and some reasonings. Uh, okay, what's interleaving? So this is the cosine function on the left side. On the left side, you have the cosine function. 
On the left side, we have a cosine function here. This is the original one, and this is the interleaved one. So what's the difference? The difference is the first one takes x, and the second one takes a pair of x's. But essentially, it performs the same operations on, on the left and, and right side. But now what happens is that there, is a, there are two dependency chains that are interleaved. And what happens is that uh, this increases performance. So x, x1 here depends on this one, and x2 depends on this one, and x1 depends on this one. You will always skipping the previous, uh, previous command and taking the one before, one before that. And this is how we interleave it. Uh, we, I did an experiment here, so I call it interleaving experiment. Uh, it's a called recursive call to cosines. So here is a here is my uh, here is my inner loop. It calls cosine of s, but it, uh, it s equals cosine of s. So what happens is that you have a loop, loop carry dependency. You need to calculate the current value uh, before you, you can uh, the previous value before you can calculate the current value. And there is a recursion length, and I modify this parameter. It goes from one to two to three to five and so on. This is the original implementation, and this is implementation when I'm using the interleaved version. So what happens? So when the recursion size is one, so, so this is the, the ratio, the, the, if you runtime ratio, the, the runtime of uh, interleaved version divided by the runtime of simpler version. So uh, when the ratio is one, uh, when the, uh, when the um, sorry, rec recursion count is one, so I see that it doesn't affect it. whether I'm using interleaved version or I'm using the, 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 the simple version, it doesn't matter, at least for the desktop system. For the desktop system, I use this laptop. So it's Intel CPU 10th generation. Uh, for the embedded system, I use the Raspberry Pi, Pi ARM Cortex. And you see even for one recursion length of one that it's a bit faster. But as I increase the, 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 the recursion length, the runtime ratio becomes approaches two almost for both systems. So you see that if dependency chain is, so the, this dependency chain of cosine is about, let's say 20 or 30 instructions. So if the dependency chain is not long enough, uh, the, the CPUs don't have problems. But as the dependency chain becomes longer and longer, the CPUs start to struggle. There is less and less available LP and that makes this thing uh, slower and that makes the, the interleaved version faster. Okay, so question for you. Uh, Lookups in linked list, can we do interleaving here? Yeah, so uh, sometimes if you have just one list, you cannot do it. But if you have in some problems where you have several lists, not one, but like have n lists, then you can do four parallel lookups in, list, in a list. And that creates more uh, opportunity. So in these cases, if, 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 if uh, in these cases, if the data for, for the linked list is mostly coming from the L1 cache, it might not ma matter, but if it comes from the L3 cache, from the memory, it can make a significant difference. And what about lookups in trees? Can we interleave those? Let's say we have n lookups. In the tree. I have n lookups in a binary, tr uh, look binary tree. Yeah, we can interleave it. I'll show you. So if we, uh, for the uh, for the linked list for the link for the linked list uh, we can interleave it only if we have several linked lists. But for the trees, um, we can do parallel lookups in the trees. Um, how does it work? We have n values stored in a vector, and we want to look them up in a tree. Okay. So how does how does the lookup in the tree look look like? So we take our value and we have a current node. If our value is smaller than the value in the current node, we go left. And if our value is larger than the current node, we go right. If it's the same, we're already there. So that's the, 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 the lookup in a binary tree. Now, how do we do parallel? The parallel lookup, the parallel lookup for parallel lookup, we have our um, we have our values, n values in a vector. We need another vector which, which holds the current node. It holds the current node. And then, and then this is the, so we set an uh, initial, we initialize for each node to root. And then we have this loop here. 
we have this loop here that uh, what does it do? It goes through from 0 to n several times until this not null count is greater than 0. And if values of, so it takes the current nodes, if it's not a null pointer, it takes the current node of i and checks, calculates the next node, or if it files results of i equals true. So do you understand what this code do? Do I need to explain it more? Yes, okay, so that's fine. Uh, it's not a simple code, and I was thinking about write, drawing an image, just didn't have time. So, let's say you have a, a vector of two values. Uh, you're looking up two values. You allocate another vector, which calls the current node, which has, again, uh, has a two, uh, length of two. One is for the, uh, for the value zero, one is for the value one. Then you, you, you put the root in the both, in the zero and the, for the zero and the one. Then your first iteration, you go to the zero, check if it's left or right, should you go left and right, and update the zero. Then you move to one, check should I go left and right, and put the current value, for, the current value to the left or right, depending on what's, what's going on. And then you repeat the iterations. So you do it another time and another time until you finish all. You, 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 this level by le you this level by level. I don't think I'm clear now. Um, how do I explain it? So, so this is the this is the this is the so we have n lookup values and we have current nodes n of them and uh, values of phi. So I take the current nodes. I take it as a node and I update the current node of phi, and then I move to i plus one and then move to i plus two and I do do this in one pass and I'm on the level zero. Then I move to the level one nodes and then move to the level two nodes and three and four and five. So I'm doing these parallel lookups. So, uh, is it a PSS cell? Mm, no, it's not a BFS, it's a lookup in a, in a binary tree. Sorry? No, but because when you're searching, you're going like, yeah, it, it reminds of bread for search actually when I think about it. When you're on the, uh, when you're going, you, when you have a, when you have a regular search, you go root, then left, right, left, right, left, right, and so on, and you're done for this node. And then you move to the next node. Let's say root, right, left, right, left, and you're done. But this is a different, you go to the first node, you're on the root, you, you calculate left, you store it. Then you move to the node one, you're again on the root, this one, I should go right. I go right, and I store the current value of node. Then I go two, three, four, five, six on, and I have I update the current nodes. I keep the current nodes in the current nodes array, current node in the current nodes array. What is your gain? Sorry. What is your gain from this? Uh, let me show you. So what happens is that you don't have an instruction level parallelism problem anymore. So I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't explain this better, but if I spend more time on this... Um, so by the time you, you try to make, take another step uh, for a specific search, you, uh, 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 you didn't need enough time passing in your previous step because you were looking at other searches. Yes, yes. Already yes, already yes. With this, this kind of approach, the hardware can move to the next, to, the, uh, to, to update the next... Um, to update, uh, there is no instruction level, uh, there, is, there are no dependencies here. There could, dependencies are completely gone. These are interleaving all, uh, all searches in parallel because of these current nodes. Okay? Okay? Yes, question? And independent searches. And independent searches in parallel. This is the, what the code does. And this is the, the, the speed ups. So for small binary tre trees, they're a bit, uh, a, a, bit a, a bit faster, but when you get over 256K binary tree or 512K, you see that the interleaved version is much faster. Although, although it does much more job, it does loads from the current node, then stores to the current node and so on, but it has more ILP available. Yes?
How do you mean pollute the cache? Yes. 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 Yes, yes. So if you have a 200 cycles cache miss, if you need to load 200 cycles to load, that's 200 instructions, maybe 400 instructions that you can do something else. The problem is the CPU doesn't know what to do. And this is the way we, we, we give it work. So this is why we give it work. Yes. I'm going to, uh, if you're, for people who sh take photos, uh, you can send me an email, I'm sh going to send you the whole presentation. What was the size of that one cache? On this one, it's uh, 32 kilobytes, and L2 is, I think, 256. It's a bit surprising, because of your uh, performance, like it's increasing, as you have more uh, values to search for. And how it does work if it doesn't violate the L1 cache? Like, your performance should decrease one has more and more expensive memory users. Yes, but the ILP, you don't get, you do, with, the, with low ILP, you're never getting to the maximum throughput of your memories because the ILP is preventing you. When you will notice if you, if you, if you take an ILP limited problem and you mem measure memory throughput, L1, L2, L3, they will never be maximum. Even if the pro program is memory bound because the latency is what's stopping you, not the throughput. Throughput is in megabytes per second and latency is in cycles. But for binary trees, the next, the next, uh, if you're on the current node and you move to the next one, normally the next one will, uh, doesn't necessarily ha have to be any close in memory, neighbors in memory to the current one. It can be, but doesn't have to necessarily be one. Okay, moving on. Uh, so these techniques is actually, when. when the simplest. This is the first that comes to mind. Uh, and it works if the dependency chain is long enough. Uh, downsizes that sometimes there is nothing to interleave. Like if you just have one linked list, what will you be interleaving? And the second is it, it increases register pressure. So when, you, when the compiler emits code, uh, there is a limited number of registers in the CPU. Let's say 32, CPU, uh, 32 registers in the ARM or 16 in, this, in, in Intel, and then at some point you're spilling registers. Although even that can not, might not be a problem because just register spills are normally just served from the L1 cache. Yes? How would you optimize N? What, what should be considered to be too big N or too small? N is the, uh, N is the lookup uh, uh, number of values we are looking up. Let's say we have one million values that we're going to loop up. I'm not optimizing N. It will work for any van which is longer than it will cover. Let's say, uh, let's say I'm in the current node and I want to move to the next node. And the next node is not in the data cache. It's in memory. This, this takes 200 cycles. For these 200 cycles, CPU has nothing to do. Okay? These are 200 instructions that I could have used. Now the question is, I cannot do anything before I get that value from the memory. I cannot evaluate should I go left or right because I don't know where I am currently. And when you interleave, I took the current value from the, I, I took the current value, I evaluated that I should go left. And I store it and I move to the next one. I will come to that later, but I have, I, if I don't, if, if the current value, if, if I don't have, um, uh, if the current value I'm accessing is not in the L1 cache, it's in the memory, and you want to take another one, I can just move to the next, and move to the next, to the next, because if this one is not, I can issue 20 parallel loads. I can issue 50 parallel loads. The CPU can issue 50 parallel loads, but in case of going through 
through a binary tree, once you're stuck, you're stuck. There is no, you cannot move further. Okay. Uh, shortening the dependency chains. So you have dependency chains, they remain, but they're shorter. Um, uh, sometimes we break the dependency, so, so we have a large dependency chain, we break it in two or four, and then we interleave them. And this is also an option. Uh, how should we, how would we shorten reductions? So this is the code. How would we shorten it? Any ideas? Yes, two sums. So the idea is to have two or more sums, not necessarily two, can be also four. Uh, you have several sums, and you, you're, par you're, you're, you're running it in, in parallel. So this is on the, sh uh, on the left side, we have a reduction sum. On the right, on the right side, uh, this is how it's done. We have four sums. Sum zero is for i. Sum zero of one is for i plus one. Sum two is for i plus two. So we have more instruction level parallelism because sum zero depends. There is a instruction uh, loop carry dependencies from the previous iteration, but it's it doesn't. Um, there is uh, some zero, some one, some two, and some three. They can be all, all executed in parallel. All loads can be. Uh, yes. 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 The compilers do that all the time. No, 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 you don't need to write this code uh, unless you're uh, developing with compiler intrinsics or you're developing an assembly, you don't need to write this code. Uh, actually, there is, so, um, the compilers do this with all three for integers, they don't do it for floats and doubles. Uh, if you want them for floats and doubles, you need to do a F associative math or F fast math. Yes? Yes, yes, yes. So uh, the, the, the colleague said that for floating points and numbers, when you enable these things, you don't, you don't necessarily get the exact same numbers. It can be a bit different in precision. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so you don't need to do this uh, if you're, but if you want to check what's going on, you can look at the compiler assembly if it's doing it. And normally for this simple example, it will do it. Question? Yeah, you need to take care of that. But just for this, so the question is what happens if the length is not divided, divisible by four? Yeah, uh, that is, you need to take care of that. So at the end, you need to do this special treatment for that thing, but just for simplicity, if I would write the full code, it wouldn't fit the screen. Okay, moving on. Oh, what did I do? Okay, so this is a guy, I don't know, Sergei Slotin, He's a guy who does a lot of these things. Uh, he vectorized the loop on the right side with compiler intrinsics. So this is the loop that he vectorized. And um, he got 15 gigaflops. So gigaflops is floating point operations per second. So 15 gigaflops for the, when you have, when you have a single, sorry. When you have a single counter, and uh, he got 22 gigaflops when you have uh, two counters. So for the like a general C++ development, you won't be doing this. But if you're comp using vectorization intrinsics, who knows what vectorization intrinsics are? Okay, so for, for you who don't know, vectorization intrinsics allows you to use these vector instructions in the CPU, which are more powerful. Sometimes the compiler can do that for you, but many times it doesn't. And the people who are in the performance engineers, they use them a lot. And when you do with vectorization intrinsic, you will have to do this. Uh, okay, shortening data dependency chains. Any ideas for linked lists? How can we shorten them? Yes? Uh, that's not shortening. So you're going through the whole linked list. You're not, yes? Linked vectors. Yes. Uh, what are linked vectors? Linked vectors which means that you can you, you need to store, for example, each one member of your unit vector and after that you will need to point to the next vector, etc. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so there are there are uh, many times uh, so 
many people don't like linked lists and I'm, I'm myself among them. It's not that I think there's something bad with them, it's just from the hardware efficiency point of view, they have low LP and they have data cache misses. So there are many, uh, many data structures that combine, combine linked lists with vectors. So you have like a vector of 16 and then you have a pointer to the next vector of 16. So instead of, instead of holding just one value, you have more value. And there are this container, it's called Colony. Colony, I think it's even in standardized. It's a, re, it's a replacement for linked lists, but it's not a full replacement. It cannot do like random inserts. But if you're storing our unsorted data, they work really fine and have more LP and they have better memory locality. So if you're working with linked lists, you should always, and you have performance in mind, you show what things Link lists are really flexible, but they have this limit in what in in, in, in hardware in hardware things. Questions? Okay, this is discussion now. It's not a talk. <laughs> um, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. So the, the, the whole talk, sorry? Yeah. So uh, the, this talk about instruction level parallelism, you can rename it and give it a name like hiding instruction latencies. It's the same. We are talking about hiding instruction latencies and dependency chains. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, if you want to shorten the dependency chains, there are a few ways. If you have linked list, you have this. It's called somebody calls it unrolled linked list. There are several names for it. Instead of holding one value in a node, you hold several. So, while you're processing a single node, you have a lot of LP. But when you're moving to another node, then you don't. And this is one way of how to do it. Uh, Another way how to do it is you have a linked list. You have, if you have a doubly linked linked list, so it has, uh, you can go forward and backward. You take the middle and then you start two searches, one toward the beginning and one toward the end. And this is how it works also. Um, for trees, if you have binary trees, you replace them with binary trees. Binary trees have several advantages and uh, they are shallower, so you have a shorter dependency chains. And they also have better memory locality. And yeah, so this is this is the thing. This is how you can do. I don't have any measurements here. Questions? Yes. Speak up, please. If A is given, uh, you can balance Yes, if you have unbalanced trees and you balance it, it will be shorter. The, 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 the lookups in it will be shorter. It just it's uh, both algorithmic complexity and the hardware efficiency. So decreasing number of pa passes. Uh, so dependency chains remain the same, uh, but instead of passing through it x times, you pass through it smaller number of times. And um, with linked list, imagine you have a vector which has n values, and you look look up those n values in a linked list. So you can invert the invert the lookup. So you take a node of the linked list and you perform lookup in the vector. Then you move to the next node and you perform lookup in the vectors. Going through the vector has much higher ILP compared to uh, going through a linked list because it doesn't have this moment, what is the next addresses I'm ac accessing? Okay, questions? Yes? Is there a 
Uh, no, there is one tool for, uh, for uh, performance optimization, it's called Kodi, that I'm aware of. Uh, it works on source code, and there is one tool that I'll show at the end. But it doesn't, the problem with these things is like, there is no tool will tell you what to do. You need to figure out yourself. And that's why we are all here together. <laughs> uh, breaking dependencies. Now, how can we break dependencies? That means making them completely go away. So if you have linked list, um, what you can do is, you, on the first pass, you create a copy of linked list and store it in an array. And each next lookup comes from array. Arrays don't have low LP, arrays have high LP. So this is one of the ways to do it. Um, uh, it's simple, but it requires you to change the way you think. Uh, if you have to, if you need to look up n values in a linked list, uh, one way to do it is, is you create a temporary array, but you don't store values, you store pointers to the nodes. So inside the vector you have pointer to the node 0, pointer to the node 1, pointer to the node 2, pointer to the node 3. Next, in the next step, while you're iterating, you're not iterating the linked list, you're iterating the array, you're the referencing pointers but when you're iterating an array of pointers, it has high ILP, it's not a low ILP, and you can get actually speed improvements. Um, that's with linked lists. Questions? Okay, uh, if, uh, if you have a binary tree, one way to increase ILPs to representing using, a, a, it's called in array tree. That's where you have array, and if you have a root, the, the left child will be, if a root, if the current node is x, the left child is at position 2x plus 1, and the right child is position 2x plus 2. Yes? Uh huh. In a continuous block of memory. Why cannot, why cannot it store it in continuous block of memory? It can. One billion, it can. One, yeah. yeah, normally the, the CPU allocates in pages of four kilobytes. Uh, the memory is allocated in blocks of four kilobytes. So for virtu from the virtual perspective, it looks like a continuous block, but in physical memory, it's not. Yeah, how? So it will operate like it is continuous? Yeah, it, it looks, for, from the virtual memory perspective, it looks continuous, but it's, it's actually not continuous. It just looks like that. So, in, in practical use, it, it actually will be run as it is continuous uh, line. The performance will be as it is saved in a continuous one billion length line, even so it's... We, we, we don't know. You don't know what happens behind virtual memory. I never, ex I never, ex I never did like, Okay, I have, oh, let's say, one megabyte of block in virtual memory. Is it one megabyte of block in a physical memory? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I never did the experiments on that. Okay. So, uh, uh, again, the uh, time needed to perform 16 milliamp lookups in a binary tree. And you see on the, right, uh, on the lower part is the, the binary tree size and the runtime is on the y-axis. And you see that the array-based runtimes, they're same about when the tree is small, but as the tree becomes larger, you see a difference and the array-based array runtime, because it has more LP, it, 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 it becomes faster. Okay, questions? Yes? Yeah. When you have three, so normally many of these things introduce more overhead. They add, so more, most techniques add more instructions. So when you have more instructions, when you have like loads that is a three cycle latency, you don't have any issues here. You see, they're almost, in the previous example as well, when the tree was small, they were almost aligned. But then when, when, this, when, the, when the latency of loads becomes longer and longer and longer, you get this bigger and bigger difference. So it, uh, these things, uh, uh, ILP, um, 
the most problem where it causes is actually this memory. There are two, two types of problems that, that low ILP causes. One is that you cannot hide the memory latency and it becomes huge. And the second one is that, uh, and the second one is you cannot reach the peak performance in your CPU. This is when you're doing assembly stuff and compiler stuff. We'll come to that a bit later. Oh, oh 10 minutes. Oh, God. Okay, so uh, compilers, in order processors, and ILP. So, uh, what are in order processors? So, most processors nowadays are out of order. In orders are uh, smaller processors in embedded world. And um, the most popular ARM, ARM is Cortex A53. They sell it the most, and this is an in order processor. So, uh, they are much more sensitive to instruction dependency, to, uh, dependency chains, even if they depend these dependency chains are, are short. They cannot skip over instructions to find new, new source of uh, instruction level parallelism. And the problem is that when you're compiling in C and C++, you're relying on the compiler to generate efficient assembly. If it's not, uh, if it's not, if, if, if you, you, you cannot control from C and C++ which instruction first and which one is second and, and how uh, is there a dependency between the first and the second instruction. For a for a um, for a in order processor, if you have an instruction and af immediately after that the instruction depends on the previous one, that's a problem, and you want to avoid this at all costs. Um, so when you're doing optimizations for this processor, you won't be doing in C C plus plus. You will do them in compiler, uh, in compiler intrinsics, in vectorization intrinsics, or assembly. Um, Okay, so let's let, let's see what, what, what happens. So this talk is about in order processors, but it's also talk about what compilers do. So what compilers do and how they spend their time. Uh, so here on the left side, uh, two most common things, loop unrolling and interleaving. So on the left side, you here you have a loop. So this is again this, uh, this uh, pseudo assembly. So here you have a loop and it loads A and loads B and does a, C equals A plus B, and then store C. So you have a dependency between this addition and the, these two loads, and you have a dependency between stores and the previous one. So what happens is that the compiler unrolls the loop like this. Now it has, uh, it has just repeats the body two times, but that's not enough. You, you, you still have all the dependencies. So then it goes from this which is just plain unrolling to interleaving. So what happens is that loads A of zero, B of zero, loads A of I, B of I, adds C, uh, oh, this is an error, A zero plus B zero, A one plus B one, and then stores them. And you see that there is no, uh, this, this instruction depends on this one, on these two, and this next one, so, uh, all two instructions that follow one another, there is no direct dependency. So this is interleaving, but it's much fine grain, and compilers also do that. Um, here is what uh, Clang does. So this is the original loop. So this is the original loop, and this is for Intel uh, Skylake, so it's uh, out of order CPU, and this is what gets generated. You see, there is here four loads, four adds, and then four stores which are independent, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay? Uh, we don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to hurry up a bit. Um, the problem with this is that you're un unbalanced, the, the CPU resources is a problem. So the, the, the usage of the CPU resources is not balanced. You have four loads. They target four loads, in, four loading units in the CPU. Then you have four ads that target four ad, in, four ad units in the CPU. And it also increases register pressure. There is another technique, it's called uh, loop pipelining. Uh, so what's the idea? So you have, a, you have your loop, and inside your loop you have like loads, adds, and stores. And you do load, load for iteration, uh, sorry, load for iteration two, add for iteration one, and store for iteration zero. So you're interleaving different phases of, 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 of of, uh, uh, of, of, of the loop. So here how it looks. So we have here, I load A, B, C, and store, and then after pipelining, it looks like this. <laughs> A and V and B and V and C and V, uh, this is from the iteration zero. This is from the iteration one. This is store, store C, V, 
C plus. Oh, I missed something here, sorry. No, 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 it's there, it's there. So this stores from iteration zero, this adds from iteration one, and this loads from iteration two, and then it moves on next one. So you see this overlap. Okay, are you following this code? Okay, cool, cool. Because I thought that I, 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 I uh, didn't do it. So this is loop pipelining. Now loop pipelining is more balanced than resource usage. So you will need this if you're compiling, writing assembly or compiling intrinsics, never write this code. This is not a code that you should write in C or C++. But actually it is useful and the compilers can also produce such code, although I have personally never seen a compiler produce such code. But sometimes if you ask what is, what is the compiler, what the heck is it doing, this might be the, 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 the answer. Um, okay. It's complicated, so if you're doing it manually, it's really nasty. Uh, okay, and finally, tools. Now, as regards to tools, if there are any tools that will tell you this code has a high LP, a low LP, um, the things are not that great. So Intel has this uh, really nice v uh, profiler with microtextual analysis, but it doesn't make a difference between latency and throughput, so it gets all confused and all together. So it doesn't tell you actually if your code is, has a low LP or actually to uses resources too much. There is another tool, the LLVM MCA, and I think yesterday uh, David talked about it, and it's, it's a good tool for these things, but it works on assembly level. So it makes sense to use if you have short sequences of assembly, but you have large loops, and then you should find, just finding the assembly and interpreting the assembly can be a problem. So uh, this is how it looks with LLVM MCA. It's available in Godbold also, so you just pick the analysis here. And so this is, I, I wrote this code, it just sums elements of a linked list, and this is the output in assembly, which is quite nice, right? It's just four instructions. And then I put it to LLVM MCA, and this is what I get. So this is, let me explain just the assembly. So this one loads the, 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 the current value and adds it to AAX. And this one loads the next, current next. Okay, and this test if we are at the end of the loops, if not, we jump to the beginning. And this is the what LLVM MCA produced. And if you look at see here, it, it says uh, cycles with backends, pressure increase, throughput bottlenecks, resource pressure, data depends. So there is no resource pressure. This code is not slow because it has, the CPU doesn't have enough resources. It's slow because it has data dependencies. And uh, here is the dependency. So this is a loop carried. This is from the previous instruction. It goes from here. So this dependency of this register RDA, RDI, going to the next iteration, move and test. So this is what, what causes the problem and why it is slow. The tools, is the usefulness is so, so I don't know. I'm just presenting it here. Maybe somebody will find it useful. Okay, my time is up. Are there, is that the time for questions? So uh, no time for questions. I'm here. You can ask me questions. Just approach me. Thank you very much.